Because I'm glad you're watching Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Chekhu. Our top stories this week. Her Majesty the Gelson calls for a collective effort to manage waste. The government's pay revision report makes teaching and health more attractive. And Bhutan wins their first leg match of 2022 FIFA World Cup preliminary qualifiers round one against Guam. And now the story in details. Commemorating the coronation anniversary of His Majesty the Fort Drugelpo, Her Majesty the Gelson graced the launch of waste management initiatives. Sharing her concerns over the growing problems of waste, Her Majesty called for a collective effort. Her Majesty is the Royal Patron of Environment and Ozone Ambassador to the United Nations. Her Majesty said, the growing problem of waste in spite of persistent emphasis on the issue is a cause for concern. I am aware of and disheartened by the growing scale of garbage that we find on the roads, in drains and along footpaths in and around urban centers. As a result, during the monsoon season, Rainwater contaminated with waste from clogged drains overflow onto our streets and rivers. Besides creating dire health hazards for our communities, the waste eventually finds its way into oceans and the consequences are far-reaching and global. Her Majesty emphasized on the consequences that negligence on individuals' part have on countries' environment. The outcome of our neglect has only one path, the gradual degradation of our natural heritage. This has been protected for generations by deliberate and carefully thought out policies that were created under the visionary leadership of His Majesty the Fourth Trukelpo and continues to be sustained under the progressive guidance of His Majesty the King. If today we fail to consider the deeper and far-reaching consequences of our behavior and ignore our civic duties, then we are failing the ideals upon which our country has been so conscientiously built. Her Majesty urged those present to renew their pledge to fulfill individual duties to keep the surroundings clean and aesthetically pleasing and said that it is integral to act now with consistency. It is important for us to realize that the responsibility to keep our country clean does not fall upon a single organization or entity. It is imperative that we work together as every individual can make a difference. Today, let us renew our pledge to fulfill our individual duties to keep our surroundings clean and aesthetically pleasing the benefits of which will extend to a sense of well-being and happiness that we all undoubtedly feel in beautiful spaces. It is my personal view that we can ensure positive transformations if we work together, but it is integral to act now, for any delay will be too late and the damage to our environment will be irreversible. To achieve overarching goal of Zero Waste Bhutan by 2030, the National Environment Commission launched the National Waste Management Strategy, which is a revision of National Integrated Solid Waste Management Strategy 2014. It aims to prevent waste generation at the source and minimize the amount of waste going to landfill with focus on refusing, reusing, recovering and recycling waste. The Commission also launched its Zero Waste Hour initiative, which is an awareness program to attain Zero Waste Society by 2030. The initiative calls for offices, institutions and every Bhutanese to take one hour on the second day of every month to clean their surroundings. The Prime Minister's office launched the Waste Management Flagship Program. The program targets to reduce waste at every point and put in place a strong management setup and consensus monitoring system. The program also includes implementing measures to control stray dog population. Timbutomde also launched the Household Compost Product. The initiative involves composting food waste. After the event, Her Majesty also joined the participants to clean Sangegaon area. Pub game for BBS News.
Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Sring attended the swearing-in ceremony of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi last month. This is Prime Minister's second visit to, to India after assuming office in November last year. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Sring arrived this evening. Yamale, the Nachari, Punjim Junsugi, the Lam Leji message of Benedigi, the Nachama Juru, the Rangi Chudumi, Kane Bibugi, the Lashu Kane Miru, the Gakab the Gahamami Simitun, the Nachari Kom to Suda Kori Magi Kom to Legi Mitumle, the Logi to Sulegi Melap, Kara Legi Mias Session Vinla, the Ru that Magi Lunche to Sit Nam Topchi, Nachi Gahamna, Junsubachin Sevigi, the Dunde Pujai Session V. He said India reiterated their continued support for Bhutan. The Khatara, Konregil Hengi Junsoye Tsu, the Nalerime Chabri de Subbe, the Len Lumboye Kara, the Sardin Bebe Besoda, Machira Junami Sim Sim Gai Session Divina, Nilepa, La Jam Toto, La Kachi to Bum de Sukara, Jam To to Besnegi, Kokabe, Leshadu, the Kona Chashabge, Tevarasunde, Tabin Nilepa, Machilonga Gitundu. While in India, the Prime Minister met Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale and a team from India Bhutan Association upon his arrival in India on Thursday morning. Later in the evening, he witnessed the oath taking ceremony by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his ministers. Some 8,000 people, including BIMSTEC leaders, attended the ceremony. Yesterday, the Prime Minister met with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and conveyed the warm greetings and felicitations of His Majesty the King, the government and the people of Bhutan. For a Pasa in New Delhi, Pupgame, Fubibis News. The Finance Minister presented the government's pay revision report in the National Assembly. The major changes are in the teaching, health and uh, for the Prime Minister, Ministers and equivalent post holders. While the Pay Commission has recommended revision in the pay scale from 14% to 21% of all civil servants, the government proposes revision ranging from 12% to 24% with higher percentage revision at the lower position levels. Teaching allowance has been recommended between 35% and 55% on the revised basic pay based on number of years served. In addition, an allowance is recommended based on Bhutan professional standards. This was done in order to attract qualified professionals in the teaching profession. Facebook page of the Prime Minister's office said, with this revision, teaching becomes the highest paid profession. The government recommends 35 to 55 percent allowance at the revised basic pay for nurses and clinical staff based on number of years 45% for general doctors without master's degree based on number of years, 55% for doctors with master's degree and a new sub-specialist allowance of 60%. Recognizing the sacrifices made by the health workers, the government and Rose the Commission's recommendation to introduce night duty allowance of 500 niltrum per night. The government considers proposing the porter and pony charges to a lump sum 1,200 niltrum per dolam. The government also considered maintaining mileage at 16 niltrum per kilometer for all levels. The government recommended 6% pay revision for the Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers and equivalent post holders. Earlier, it was 14%. The government has proposed for 14% pay revision for Thompons and between 18 and 24% for other local government functionaries. And for the first time, Thompons and GUPs can now get vehicle quota or designated amount. The government recommends maintaining the rate carbony allowance at 100 niltrum per month. The speaker declared pay revision proposal as a money bill. It will be again discussed on Monday. This is Komal Kharka for BBS News. People can now expect the 5% voucher tax to be gone latest by the end of the next parliament session. The finance minister said the tax will be scrapped by any means very soon. MP Chwede Jamso of Nganglam had asked on the status of the government's pledge to do away with the voucher tax. Nganglam's member of parliament questioned the government why the removal of tax is taking time. He said it has been more than six months since the government took over office. In response, the finance minister said the government intends to do away with the 5% voucher tax by any means.
Tanga chiki che jende chika chinyom ki thole be siju di nga chiki nalu. Tanga chiki na cheik be piu dalu di nalu nga chiki tatu takop chakop di kachi duusa oshin. Tachi konle shudo zun be te pshi gekhab ki migi lalenta migi te chankha kadim chiyo bhi na. Nangkyu ki lalenta mi chankha kadim chiyo bhi na. Dile nga chiki tadi te di mibbe zaudalu te tiru nga chiki mangyu saya chikja gupchu ko sun be midi te katele dudik bhe nena dudik bhe nena. Tanga chiki offsetting la. Tak ada susu katanya begini na. Tapi kaya rasa sejuta matu ngaji ke. Tapi matu tu berah. Tapi sih jam tinggal berasa sih niila. Tapi ani begini dige. Tapi tato ngaji ke. Cerita ngaji juga misilu. Ngari kata tulis show aji kaji pinu mohon sewajin. Tapi songtel de. Jadi cale canga be mis songtel de. Maple me berasa zoni sih niila. Currently there are 450,000 B mobile users and 230,000 touchy cell users in the country. This is Spring Dental for BBS News. The Labour Minister claims the Japan case is not as serious as reported by the Bhutanese and the Japanese media and other social media sites. This is as per the findings and observations made by the seven-member delegation who recently visited Japan. The team travelled to Japan in April to study the concerns and problems faced by Bhutanese youth there. In the question hour session of the National Assembly today, Kinga Lode of Kamdang Ramja constituency asked for clarifications with regard to the government's findings on the situation of the Bhutanese students in Japan. Tidak cora cibet dengan cie lewat lengan kita katu le, tidak cora cibet di sisi berdua lu, tuh be alu, lu tu alu pahjumi, caca dincu dah gipcu, tuh sem gabe, tuh lejum berah ibe gigi loju, di sisi nala tuh be tenus sih nila, tuh dini gigi bana lu, tuh ta madin ba, cigi tuh nama sem me lejum ibe be tenu, cigi lejum me be tenu nala, tuh ani berdua lu, tuh dasar kham cikah, tuh dasi judu zumbe, tuh na desin cik pahjen sim le, tuh gigi ewa kadi be cicu cikah. In response, Labour Minister Ugen Doji said that not all Bhutanese students are struggling as many of them still prefer to stay back in Japan to continue their studies or find a full-time work. Konalu inchi minchi thulu logobe se migi ne suli midembe se shuni la kokap thoba chini ngache na Japan lu lakhadi du the lakhamatamba kate mise chong subni lakhatango se sa gini ki rewa yu same shu yu se debe udalu ngache lu kangel ngomadi. Talabeh macam begini, kangel dah. Pesa tak kau mandu begini, kangel men, kangel ngomadi kacim sewa cint. Pesa tak sahaja ni ale, layu matu begini, kangel aci re yuyus. Layu top dera beru, yang cint chot chot itu kita ni ini sere, tapi kiatan matu begini, kangel yuyus. Kangel ngomangi, api gun yuzin beres sesuni ila. To address these problems, he added, the delegation team has also submitted all the list of Putinist students who are currently facing visa-related issues to the Japanese authorities. And when asked about the government's initiative to help these youth repay their loans, the Labour Minister informed that the Ministry has approved the National Service Program. Under this, various jobs will be created for unemployed youths and those coming in from Japan can also get work through it. The Bhutanese delegation completed their report and returned home last month. Currently, there are over 600 Bhutanese youth working in various parts of Japan under the Learn and Earn program. This is Pasang Doji for BBS News. Insufficient rehabilitation centers in the country has become a major challenge in addressing the harmful use of alcohol. The Good Governance Committee of the National Council highlighted this during the presentation of the review report on the harmful use of alcohol in the country. Currently, there are only three rehabs in the country. Such services, according to the committee, are challenged with limited capacities, both in terms of infrastructure facilities and human resources. As a result, people either go to rehabilitation centers outside the country or relapse to abusing alcohol or drugs. Tikunjau cari sotya wadu so tip malam be, tet sabtu gigi tet disu malam be tuh ini suni la. Tikunjau cari sotya wigi sabtu gigi tega hepta ya ane be dulu la. Dah be be wajin nyoh nyoh sang logji be mi disu gigi katu le tet. Tapi sih nampak nampak so kongre gigi katu le jimme pan. Be be wajin zasang gigi katu le tapi sih jimme midi gigi katu le jah doram beni gigi si jamme menju gigi katu le tet jah doram beni gigi si jamme. Inchi indro 
in route da sechu menchu katera kiru madami ki mi disu te ta kunji charsu de wanale ba ne be ke u imbe sunila men kang da chutin te wa disu di dula tin lo kak tab ki men jini gila ko zani ki men jin be kak tab beni ki dunel te di di dula te indi gira bero men di jimchi drab imdo ji ba wachin ru ki khamna chang lo ji be mione me bala kunji charsu te wa disu nale ba tango be du di ba da kunji charsu te wa gi tin de malambi ki thong ju is sunila ngajere gi du ki khamna lo kunji charsu te wa da disu e vi che non lo dici, non c'è la capacità. Se 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 non lo dici, non c'è la capacità which is higher than the global consumption of 6.2 liters. According to the health ministry, alcohol liver disease continues to be a top killer in the country. Going by the annual health bulletin 2017, every year the disease leads to 15 deaths. The government spends millions of needum to treat patients suffering from alcohol-related diseases and referral cost which is growing by the year. In 2016, the ministry in collaboration with relevant agencies, started implementing the national policy and strategic framework to reduce harmful use of alcohol. Besides health problems, excessive use of alcohol also affects interpersonal relationships, increases violence, accidents and road crashes. Renewed reports indicate that 70% of domestic violence were committed under the influence of alcohol. This is Ring Dandu for BBS News. For the first time, Bhutan will have scientific data to study climate change and its impacts on plants and animals in the next five years. The Himalayan mountain ecosystem is constantly under threats of negative impacts of climate change, and researchers believe that Bhutan's ecosystem must be manifesting the changes through various phenomena, but there has not been any study due to lack of data. The data repository is maintained with the Ugen Wongchuk Institute for Conservation and Environmental Research. The institute is doing so through Himalayan Environmental Rhythms Observation and Evaluation Systems or the HEROES project. 20 schools from across the country are part of this project. But as of now, uh, because uh, we don't have comprehensive data and we don't have uh, any long-term effective monitoring system in place, because of that, we can't see how and to what extent those uh, changes are happening in Bhutan. So HEROES, uh, as, as a climate monitoring system, uh, is going to generate, not only going to generate a very comprehensive data on climate and its impact on life cycles of plants and animals, but also is going to uh, promote uh, 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 understanding and appreciation on how climate is changing in Bhutan and what are its impact on uh, biodiversity in our country. Kazatopchu Middle Secondary School in Thimpu is one of the schools where climate change is part of their environmental science curriculum. The school has been recording temperature and amount of rainfall every day since 2014. They then observe the changes in life cycles of the plants and feed the data every day online for the institute. Uh, we get to understand the interesting facts and about the life cycle of the plants and then we get to know about the climate change that change from year to year and then from this kind of project we can even uh, educate our younger generation regarding the climate change. Climate change changes from year to year and we cannot trust the climate change and for this we, we I think we need to do this phenology activity so that we can give awareness and measure to people and communities around us. And we can know when and when will the flowers will bloom as well as the new leaves will start to grow. And we can also predict when will the leaves will die. Sometimes the, the plants and trees need uh, favorable conditions to germinate and grow well. So if they don't require that kind of climate, they die. So we can know when and when will the plant will die due to the climate. And we can create self-awareness on that, ma'am, like climate awareness. And we can know when to protect those plants and help them to germinate properly. Man. The fennel observation where we have the hands-on practice. We are actually observing the uh, life cycle events of our uh, plants. And uh, that's uh, real and it's like climate change no more becomes alien to them. 
because then they are connected with the nature, so connected that they understand that because of the changes in the temperature and the amount of rainfall and the moisture, soil moisture, they are e easily able to link it. The school even came up with some data analysis and findings in a research paper published in 2017. For the National STEM Olympiad, uh, we worked on a paper that is uh, um, the analysis of uh, an analysis of the temperature and precipitation variation pattern under climate change in Kastabchu, and then uh, we used the uh, weather station data of uh, temperature, the two variables, temperature and precipitation, for the last three years, 2014, 15, and 16. And then we were uh, able to conclude that the climate at Kastavchu was changing. It, uh, the temperature increased to one degree Celsius. There was, uh, uh, we found out that and we, could, uh, we also understood that uh, the precipitation was decreasing due to the increase in temperature and the weather has also become erratic. In Pumta, a science teacher and two class 12 students from Jakar High Secondary School are responsible for the project. In our school, we have uh, around 10 adopted plants. And then these plants are especially adopted because uh, these are the species of plants which are very sensitive to the changes which is uh, actually happening around the environment. Annually, we compile the data out of uh, the observation. And then we try to do comparative studies through the different years. And then whenever there is appearance of any kind of uh, new events in the plants, we take the photo and then we upload online. We can learn about how we can contribute to combating climate change as individuals with changing environmental systems and also understanding them through comparative studies. It is before last year that we had a snowfall during March where it destroyed all of our plants and they are not able to complete their phases. It is very unbelievable that it is not on March because actually Till January or February, there will be snowfall in Bumthang, but it is, it, there was snowfall during March. There is fluctuation in number of cones, there is fluctuation of number of flowers they are bearing every year, which means that there is something happening with climate, uh, climate change. There are new findings from other selected schools, but researchers say the observations cannot be directly attributed to climate change for now, as climate change requires analysis of long-term data. For us, it's quite a new observation. Uh, for example, in Galink, uh, we have been observing a peach plant for almost five years. And what we uh, observed was uh, uh, that peach plant actually flowers twice in a year. So one in the spring and one in the late autumn. Uh, of course, I think like uh, the flowers uh, uh, that comes up uh, in late autumn does not actually form uh, any fruit maybe because of uh, some chilling effect uh, of the winter condition. But uh, what excites us most is uh, if there is a global warming, if there is an increase in temperature, this uh, uh, flowering might actually uh, form fruits. And uh, that means I think like we'll have two fruiting seasons in a year. In the next five years, Bhutan will be one of the few Himalayan countries to have a comprehensive data on climate, which will be vital for understanding climate change in the region. Climate change study is invaluable for Bhutan as it is one of the most vulnerable countries to the impacts of glacial lake outburst flood. As per a recent study by the EC Mode, over 30% of glaciers in the Hindukush Himalayan region could melt by the end of this century. With additional information from Kipchu in Pumta, Pup Game for BBS News. Considering the affordability and accessibility challenges of sanitary pads in remote schools and nunneries, the Education Ministry will supply free sanitary pads to 107 remote schools and 17 nunneries starting this year. UNICEF is funding the initiative. The Education Ministry also handed over two sanitary pad burning incinerators to two schools in Thimpu as a pilot project. The distribution of free sanitary pads launched yesterday will be done phase-wise. The free access to sanitary pads will help young girls in remote schools to not miss classes. A study conducted by the UNICEF and the Education Ministry found that 43% of adolescent girls skip classes and other activities 
due to lack of menstrual hygiene management facilities at schools and this has led to a negative impact on their right to education. Educating our younger generation in schools about menstruation is an effective long-term solution. Our young girls and boys are the perfect agents of change to bring about the social change in their homes and communities. Then, in addition to the awareness campaign, sanitary pads should be made available to all girls. The launch of the initiative also marked the end of the Red Dot online campaign on Facebook, which the Education Ministry initiated to celebrate Menstrual Hygiene Day. The Red Dot campaign promoted on the responsible and safe disposal of sanitary pads as disposal has always been a challenge, not just in Bhutan but globally. The plastic used in disposable sanitary napkins are not biodegradable and lead to environmental hazards. The impact is more evident because of the unorganized ways of collection. So for this, the Red Dot campaign encouraged women and girls to take any eco-friendly bag or paper and mark it red for proper disposal. This will help segregate menstrual waste for the waste collectors. Considering the number of sanitary pads used per menstruation cycle by women and girls in a year, approximately 208 million pads are disposed in Bhutan. Sanampem for PBS News. And Bhutan defeated Guam by one goal to nil in the first leg match of the 2022 FIFA World Cup preliminary qualifiers round one. The only goal of the game was scored by the midfielder Sring Doji in the 35th minute. The Bhutanese national team will now travel to Guam for the away match to be played on Tuesday. The winner of the two-legged competition will qualify for the second round schedule to be played in September. A beautiful pass, a beautiful back. And that brings us to the end of this edition's Bhutan This Week. Thank you very much for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.